What's going on everyone, Brad here. In this video, I decided to finally rearrange my home theater to how I've wanted it since we basically moved into this house and figured I'd bring you along for the ride and talk about why I decided to do it and figured if anything, it might give you some ideas about your home theater or gaming room. Sound good? Then let's go. Before we get started, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already as I post new gaming and home theater content every single week. And don't forget to use my Amazon affiliate links in the description below if you'd like to support the channel for free. Also, if listening to podcasts is your thing, check out the Fun Waste of Time and give it a listen. Basically, me and a group of friends get together and discuss things like home theater, gaming, comic books, movies, and anything else considered a fun way to waste your day. Links to the latest episode are in the description. With that out of the way, let's dive in and get started. Now, as you can see, my room is fairly large at 17 by 20, and we've had the TV on the 20 foot side since we moved in, and I've just never really been that happy with the way it both looks and sounds. We just honestly set it up that way out of habit. Behind the large curtain on the left is a sliding glass door to our backyard, and because I have such an amazing wife, she's totally fine with me putting the TV in the front of that curtain as long as there's a space to get to the backyard. And also, a home theater would not be complete without a cat tower, am I right? Anyway, I knew we had our work cut out for us, so if we wanted to finish this little project by the end of the weekend, it's time to get started. Now obviously getting started means unhooking everything and putting it off to the side just to put it somewhere else later. Also if you're wondering how I built my front speaker risers, I went very DIY and bought four 12x12x1 12 by 12 by white patio bricks from Walmart along with a few yards of black felt to cover them up. They're not the best but for a total of about 15 bucks, they look great and can handle pretty much any speaker I put on them. A little tip for moving subwoofers without removing their spiked feet is to flip them on their side and push them that way. You may need to take the speaker grill off as it will cause some resistance when sliding, but it's a much easier way to move them around than having to go through the hassle of taking their feet off. As you can see in the video, wire management was pretty much non-existent with the old setup. This has honestly bugged me forever and trust me when I say that the new setup's wire management will be a night and day difference between this ugly rat's nest of cables. I think I may actually own stock in black zip ties now. The biggest reason this looks like this is when we first moved into this house, we had a different TV and different stand. When we upgraded both, I guess I adopted the mentality of set it up now, clean it up later. Word of advice, don't be like me. With everything unhooked and out of the way, it was time to move the TV stand to the new spot and also take down the Dolby Atmos overhead speakers, which are the Polk Audio OWM3 speakers. I'm using some generic speaker wall mounts I've had from Amazon for a few years and they work pretty well, though I think they're now discontinued. Something I've always liked to do when hooking up more than one or two components is to lay them out in the order that they're going to be installed. This has always made it a bit easier and less time intensive doing it this way, Plus it gives me a chance to wipe them down with a microfiber cloth to make sure they're clean before installation. Also, if you're wondering why the couch corners look like Freddy Krueger has been practicing his dream murdering skills when no one's looking, it's because we have a cat who likes to claw at them and also because the couch is old and we simply don't care about how it looks. It will eventually be replaced with a cloth couch that will have anti-cat scratching robots installed that will disintegrate any and all felines within a 12 block radius, or we could just buy some kitten mittens. Starting out with wire management properly this time, I chose to route and wrap all power cables for each device using the cable management hooks on the back of our TV stand and using zip ties as I went along. I was initially going to go through the cable management channels that you see as holes here, but decided to route the HDMI cables through there instead. I do always recommend keeping video and audio cables separate from power cables whenever possible. I'd also advise making as many weird and ugly faces and keeping your mouth open as much as possible when doing this as it will only add to the overall clean look of your wire management skills. You can also treat it like being a car mechanic and use it as an excuse to try your hand at inventing new curse words and phrases. It truly is an underappreciated art. Now that we've gone over Mouth Breather 101 and how it relates to cable management, I like to go ahead and plug all power cables into a surge protector or battery backup that's turned off just to make sure that overall cable length is good. I then start working on plugging everything into the receiver, starting with the bottom speaker wires and working my way up. This allows me to cable manage both the speaker cables and HDMI cables separately for a cleaner look in my opinion, plus it just helps the overall workflow of stuff. 
again, I do like to zip tie things as I go as I feel it keeps things clean and it's easier to not only see what you need to do next, but also your overall progress. The two subwoofer cables are plugged in and cable managed, though at this point I hadn't received the mini DSP yet, so you'll see that later in the video. This shot sucks, but basically I'm routing each HDMI cable through the cable channels on the back of the TV stand. Go me for not thinking to move the camera. Plugging in all the HDMI cables was easy, though if you don't want to be an idiot like yours truly, you should label them first so you remember which ports to plug them into if you have custom labels set up on your receiver or pre-pro. I routed the left surround cable alongside the ethernet cable that goes to my wife's office. I had ordered more of these white monoprice cable clips, but Amazon decided it would be best if they delayed them until after I finished this video. And before you get ahead of yourself and say this looks horrible Brad, I installed a curtain over that entryway so it looks nice and neat now instead of the train wreck it was before. You know, while I love physical media and its quality over streaming, as well as having a collection of movies to look at and choose from since Blockbuster and Hollywood Video bit the dust due to some newfangled invention that puts DVDs and Blu-rays in mailboxes, moving them around absolutely sucks. There, I said it. It doesn't help that my OCD loves to make sure I know when something isn't in alphabetical order at 3 o'clock in the morning, which leads to chronic nighttime snacking on Cheez-Its and binge-watching infomercials for Ron Popeil's Pasta Maker and Chef Tony's Miracle Blade 3. All of this is to say that I absolutely love having a physical media collection. I mean, just look at it. I don't think a home theater would be complete without some movie memorabilia scattered throughout. Now if you're wondering about the shelf for my center channel, I made that a few years ago by drilling holes into shelving track brackets and then bolting those onto the TV mount on the stand itself. The pads for angling the center channel down were bought on Amazon and links to that are in the description below. I also used a couple of angled door stoppers to angle them further. Yep real high-end home theater stuff. For positioning the front and surround speakers, I just used a tape measure to make sure that the speaker risers in the front were equal distance from the side walls. That was after I made sure that the TV stand was perfectly centered from the wall as well. The surrounds were measured from the front of the room and both were adjusted to match. All speakers were then angled to the main listening position using a laser pointer. My dog that I don't have seems to have eaten the footage of that so I can't show it. But the footage that my imaginary dog didn't eat was of me installing the top middle right Atmos speaker. I used toggle bolts here to make sure that the speaker mount was extra secure since these will be hanging from the ceiling. The mounts themselves allow for adjustment of the angle of the speaker which for Atmos speakers I'd recommend aiming them straight down especially in a 5.1.2 setup like I have. The speaker mounts can also be extended and since I have vaulted ceilings, this made getting the top middle left Atmos speaker more in line with the top middle right. It's not perfectly in line, but the receiver's distance settings take care of that. In a perfect world, I'd have core concealers at the ready instead of using these monoprice cable clips, but the ones I want are on back order on Amazon, so these will do for now. But what do you say we take a look at the completed setup, huh? And here it is, minus the lighting equipment obviously. I think it turned out great. The room actually feels quite a bit bigger than before and dare I say that everything just seems to fit better when set up this way. The couch is still the same 6 or so feet away from the TV and the only downside both my wife and I have noticed is that it makes the TV look way smaller because of the curtains, so an upgrade might happen at some point. I still need to get some cable concealers for the Atmos speaker wires but I can live with that look until then. The wire management also turned out beautifully I think. Remember how I said it would be a night and day difference between the old setup and the new one? Well, let me go ahead and refresh your memory. Ugh, what is that? Gross. Now, it's not perfect by any means, but it's much better than it was before. I actually didn't do any wire management on the left side because I'm currently waiting on the arrival of a second PB2000 Pro subwoofer. And remember those unsightly cables going up the wall here? Well, look at this nice curtain instead, huh? Overall, I think it's a massive improvement in both aesthetics and sound quality actually, believe it or not. Look for a separate video soon where I compare REW measurements from the old setup versus the new one. It should be pretty interesting to see just how much better the frequency response is after repositioning everything. I actually can't believe it, it's a pretty drastic difference. And that's going to wrap up this video. If you enjoyed it even at just a teeny tiny bit, hit that like button and let me know in the comment section below. Thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next one where I move to Cincinnati and get insulted by Jack Black before he was famous. LA laid back. Horse poop! <laughs>